Sky Adventure with Lowell Thomas. Good evening, everybody. This is Lowell Thomas. Lowell Thomas speaking, flashing to you the news of the world, pictured by Fox Movie Tone. Here we are in this palace in the harem of El Glauber, never seen before by Western eyes. And we sail down to Zanzibar. <laughs> Somebody's rocking the boat. Lowell Thomas has often been called the greatest journalist the world has ever known. For five decades, his voice was the most recognized and most listened to in the world. He was the first reporter to originate broadcasts from the field, and he did it from virtually every corner of the globe. When his movie travelogues became a much-anticipated part of America's movie-going experience, to enhance the drama and adventure for the armchair traveler, he pioneered Cinerama, the first widescreen productions ever seen in America's movie theaters. News reporting may have been his job, but travel reporting was his obsession. Through travel logs, radio and TV, magazine articles, and more than 50 books, he exposed millions to exotic sights, sounds, and experiences they would have never known but for Lowell Thomas. It's the compelling legacy of Lowell Thomas that serves as the standard of excellence for the SATW Foundation's Lowell Thomas Travel Journalism Awards. From more than 1,200 entries, judges from the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill School of Journalism and Mass Communications have selected the 2011 winners. In the category of Best Travel Blog, the Bronze Award goes to Today in the Sky and Ben Mutzabal on usatoday.com. Taking silver, food and travel journalist Brad A. Johnson. Blog.bradajohnson.net. Gold in the category goes to Blog on Europe and SATW member Rick Steves on ricksteves.com slash blog. His blog isn't so much raw as it is serendipitous as readers engage each other and Rick responds to their comments. For best online travel journalism site, bronze is budgettravel.com from Arthur Farmer's Budget Travel, Nino Wildorf, Editor-in-Chief. Silver is presented to matadornetwork.com from Matador, David Miller, Senior Editor, Julie Galazzo, Managing Editor. The gold-winning travel journalism site is National Geographic Traveler, Keith Bellows, Editor-in-Chief, Jerry Seeley, Web Director. The site led the field of applicants with its effective use of online multimedia flowing from the website into its 50 Places of a Lifetime iPad app. The app is the single primary reason that National Geographic Traveler's online journalism distinguishes itself from this year's field. Winning bronze for Best Travel Guidebook is Zinister's Guide to New York City, The Last Holy Analog Guide to New York City, edited by Ian Halliday from Microcosm Publishing. Silver belongs to the New England Grimpendium, a guide to macabre and ghastly sites, by J.W. Oker for Countryman Press. And the Best Travel Guidebook is USA's Best Trips, 99 themed itineraries across America. From Lonely Planet, Sarah Benson, coordinating author. This guidebook provides readers with everything they need to know about the quintessential American event, the road trip. Even better, it reminds you about how people used to travel, focusing on the journey as much as the destination, and what we may have lost by flying to destinations. Organized by region, season, and by theme, it provides information for both short one-day trips and week-long adventures. For Best Travel Book, Bronze goes to Crossing the Heart of Africa by SATW member Julian Smith for HarperCollins Publishers. The silver winner is Louisiana Rambles, Exploring America's Cajun and Creole Heartland from Ian McNulty for University Press of Mississippi. Winning gold as the best travel book is Bonobo Handshake, a memoir of love and adventure in the Congo by author Vanessa Woods for Gotham Books. Handshake reveals fascinating aspects of our world with lighthearted descriptions of interactions among people and animals. Vanessa writes in a concise, conversational tone about the places, people, animals, and ideas her readers are unlikely to encounter on their own, and she invites them to laugh along the way. In the category of Best Short Travel Article, the bronze winner is The Dinner Hour, written by Jeannie Ralston in National Geographic Traveler. Silver goes to The Aerogram and The Email by Don George for Gatling.com. And the top short travel article is Little Nibblers by Nathan Myers in Islands. Having one's feet nibbled by fish is without question one of the most unique practices ever explored in a Lowell Thomas submission. It earns gold both because the practice is so unusual and the writing is so good. The lead, I'm being eaten alive, grabs the reader, or at least nibbles at him or her. In the competition for Best Special Purpose Travel Story, the bronze winner is The Other Side of the Mountain by Brian Mockenhaupt in Outside. The silver winner is Drinking in Islamabad by Lawrence Osborne in Playboy. And winning gold, The Last Hike with Philip by Margot Fife in Explore. Not your typical travel story, Last Hike relates the recurring polar pilgrimage of two best buddies. Through pointed words and phrases, the reader witnesses the healing spirit of love between an odd match. The story wins Margot Fife gold and much, much more. For best personal comment, 
Bronze goes to Making Roof Tiles in Peru by Don George for Reese, Literary Journeys for the Discerning Traveler. The silver winner is Stepping Behind Enemy Lines at a Tiny Japanese Bar by Gary Warner in the Orange County Register. Taking Gold, Loneliness, the Same in Any Language by SATW member April Orcutt in the San Francisco Chronicle. In this story, a mother leaves her daughter alone in a rail car, and April masterfully tells the story of what follows. This is a beautifully written column about a small piece of life we all might encounter both at home and while traveling. In the category of Best Cultural Tourism Article, winning bronze is Amazon Awakening by Andy Isaacson for the New York Times. Winning silver, Acoustic Venice by Edward Riedeker Henderson in Islands. And the top cultural tourism article is Ghosts of Hong Kong by Dysan McLean for National Geographic Traveler. Dysan takes the reader into a world of ghosts, both spiritual and physical. Along the way, we're introduced to the ins and outs of city landmarks, restaurants, ancient culture. Ghosts explains why Hong Kong is much more than skyscrapers and glitter and what the future may hold for older neighborhoods. For Best Environmental Tourism article, the Bronze Award winner is Peru's Lovely Bones by Gregory Dykum in Afar. Taking Silver, Out of the Mist by Kim Brown Seeley in Virtuoso Life. And gold in the category goes to On the Backs of Giants by SATW member Melanie Radzicki McManus in the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Melanie does an excellent job of telling the big story by getting the reader to care about the small story. She had me at the first wave of her trunk, Melanie writes, as her introduction to Kwan, a 19-year-old pregnant elephant at Pantera Elephant Farm in Thailand. What follows is a richly detailed account of caring for Quan for a day. In the category of Best Service-Oriented Consumer Article, winning bronze is Labor Pains, How Should Meeting Planners Deal with Hotel Union Disputes? by SATW member Maria Linhart on MeetingsFocus.com. Silver's winner is Travelers Lose as Airlines Online Sites Square Off by Carol Pucci in the Seattle Times. Winning Gold, The Free Cruise Offer, Scam or Legit? by Dan Askin for CruiseCritic.com. Anyone who thinks they are getting a free cruise needs to read Dan's piece. He does us all a service by calling the toll-free numbers and asking the right questions. For Best Travel News Investigative Reporting, the bronze winner is Amtrak Ridership is Up, but Passengers Grouse About Frequent Delays by Nancy Trehos and Andrea Sachs in the Washington Post. Taking Silver, Are These Batteries the Next Threat to Flyer Safety? by Gary Stoller in USA Today. And the top Travel News Investigative Reporting Award winner is A Mountain of Trouble by Joshua Hammer in Outside. In a wonderful old-fashioned first-person investigative piece, Joshua retraces the steps of the three young Americans who ventured into Iranian territory while hiking in the lush mountains of Iraqi Kurdistan. The story, published before any release was achieved, recounts their ordeal step-by-step from their arrest through their imprisonment in the notorious Evan Prison in Tehran. For Best Adventure Travel Article, bronze is awarded to Rolling with Thunderbolt by Michael McRae in Outside. The Silver Award winner is The Long Road by James Peterson in Playboy. And the gold-winning adventure travel article is Heart of Dark Chocolate by Rowan Jacobson in Outside. This is a trip into the depths of Bolivia in search of wild cacao, a natural bean which, as Rowan writes, is unmolested by millennia of botanical tinkering. The journey takes the reader deep into Bolivian jungles and is an engaging read, one to savor perhaps with a hot cup of tea or coffee and a nice piece of exquisite chocolate. For coverage of cruise travel, the Bronze Award winner is In Praise of Slow by Quail McGuire Gillies in Canadian Geographic. Winning Silver, Galapagos, Does Darwin's Laboratory Still Hold a Lesson for the World? by SATW member Jad Davenport in Islands. And the Gold Award winner for cruise travel is Back Channels of Eastern Europe by Jill Sinchel for The Record in Hackensack, New Jersey. Jill finds a truly inspirational way to cover 15 ports of call, five languages, three alphabets, and 25-plus centuries of history in a 15-day cruise. It is excellent reporting with good use of historical sites and figures. The Best Special Package or Project Bronze Award is presented to Bus to Antarctica by Andrew Evans in National Geographic Traveler, print and online. The Silver Award goes to Yosemite in Four Seasons by Mark Boster for the Los Angeles Times, print and online. The gold in the category goes to Southern California Close-Ups by Christopher Reynolds, also for the Los Angeles Times, print and online. In addition to excellent writing and photography in the paper, the website includes an interactive map and the project features editorial comment in multiple media. The package is a fantastic tool for visitors and residents alike. 
For the best photo illustration of a travel article, the Bronze Award winner is Amazon Awakening by photographer Andy Isaacson in the New York Times. Andy's writing of this article also took bronze in the cultural tourism category, taking silver, the spirit of Istanbul, by photographer Carolyn Drake in Afar. The gold in the category belongs to The Road Less Traveled in South America by photographers Carla Gachet and Ivan Kaczynski, also in Afar. The photos capture the energy and boundless life of the people of this continent and the raw spirit of discovery and exploration. This body of work makes you want to pack your bag, grab your chacos, and board the first plane to Ecuador. For the best article on foreign travel, winning bronze is The Call of Crete by Robert Draper in Virtuoso Life. The silver award-winning article is Austria Zillertal, an alpine valley of great skiing and domestic fun by Steve Hendricks in the Washington Post. And winning gold in the category, The Telltale Scribes of Timbuktu by Peter Gwynn in National Geographic. As if the subject were not remote and mysterious enough, Peter's writing is filled with atmosphere as he takes us on location with facts, history, and unforgettable descriptions. It isn't the prettiest city, he writes about the heart of Timbuktu, yet it is a watchful city. With every passing vehicle, children halt soccer games, women pause from stoking adobe ovens, and men interrupt their conversations to note who is riding by. Next, the winners for best article on U.S. and Canadian travel. The Bronze Award winner, Main Street Takes a New Turn, by SATW member Wayne Curtis in BIA. The silver winner is 10 Reasons to Visit New Orleans, by Andre Cadrescu in The Rotarian. And gold in the category belongs to In Bay of Fundy, The Tides, They Are a Changing, from SATW member John Flynn in the San Francisco Chronicle. The story offers vivid images of the various sites along the New Brunswick Bay. John's reporting and research enable the reader to better understand the remarkable tides, which may have the bay devoid of water at one moment, and later flood the bay with water as high as a five-story building, causing mighty rivers to flow backward. In the category of Best Audio Broadcast, the Bronze Award goes to Ireland, the West is the Best, from SATW member Joseph Rosendo on the Travelscope Radio Network and Travelscope.net podcast. 100,000 welcomes to our Irish adventure. Ireland is an old country with a young spirit, a country where man has lived for 10,000 years, but which is truly just coming of age. Winning silver, Spain, Portugal, commentaries on weekday by Willie Weir on KUOW Public Radio, Seattle. In the beautiful little town of Miranda de Duro, Portugal, just, just across the Douro River and the border of Spain, you can get a hotel for between 30 to 50 euro, or you can camp at the municipal campground for... The young woman who checked us into the campground quickly switched to English when she found out we didn't speak Portuguese. I have to apologize for my entire country when she mentions a recent report where way too many Americans thought Portugal was a city in Spain. Americans don't get out much, I joke. Then it's time to go. I walk back to our tent and gaze at the cathedral up the hill, bathed in orange glow of the sunset, and I wonder if I ever truly will understand just how fortunate I am. The gold-winning audio is Travel with Rick Steves by SATW member Rick Steves on National Public Radio. Rick's program is deceptively simple with sophisticated production values. He treats listeners to animated conversations with unusual people who have taken extraordinary journeys. Hi, I'm Rick Steves. One of our goals each week is to inspire you to experience the surprises that await us all out there in the rest of the world. So today on Travel with Rick Steves, we're talking to people just like you who have a travel story to tell, including one who's decided to dance with the locals, joining in the annual ball season in Vienna. Some interesting ones are the candy makers, the bonbon ball, and the chimney sweeps have a ball. Let's resolve to enjoy the world with gusto. It's Travel with Rick Steves. For the best video travel broadcast, Taking Bronze is SATW member Rick Steves again for Rick Steves Europe on American Public Television. The story of Granada is all about the Islamic Moors. In the year 711, these North African Muslims crossed the Straits of Gibraltar and quickly conquered the entire Iberian Peninsula, eventually converting most of its inhabitants. Throughout the Middle Ages, for over 700 years, Spain was a predominantly Muslim society living under Muslim rule. And that age shapes today's sightseeing agenda. Granada's dominant site is the Alhambra, the last and greatest Moorish palace. Nowhere else does the splendor of that civilization, Al-Andalus, shine so brightly. 
the silver winning telecast is Thailand from Golden Triangle to White Sands by SATW member Joseph Rosendo and Julie Rosendo on KQED TV and other PBS television stations. Hi, I'm Joseph Rosendo. Join me on Travel Scope as I continue my Thai adventure when I travel south to Krabi Province for island pleasures and then head north for cultural adventures in the Golden Triangle. And Taking Gold as the best video travel broadcast is Hong Kong, Quest for the Dragon, on Richard Bang's Adventures with Purpose, as seen on American public television, and goes to SATW member Richard Bang's, Susan McNally, and John Gibbons. Richard does much more than show us the sights of Hong Kong. He helps us understand what makes this one of the world's great cities. He tells the story with pointed writing, high production values, and great photography. My quest is to discover what unique forces drive this city to virtuosity and greatness. Hong Kong's uninhibited energy is clear as rice wine. In its corridors of commerce, in its seething alleys of ancient apothecaries, in its earthly rhythms and Promethean spirit. What cultural undercurrent runs through this miracle city? What age-old traditions galvanize the fierce devotion to work and family here? To what can we attribute their longevity, health, their unparalleled triumphs against enormous odds, even their seemingly paradoxical success with environmental protection? For the best travel coverage in magazines that are not specifically travel-oriented, the Bronze Award winner is Outside, Abraham Streep, Senior Editor. Winning Silver, Westways, SATW member Elizabeth Harriman, Travel Editor. John Lehrer, Editor-in-Chief. Taking the Gold Award, Southern Living, Rachel Hartage, Executive Editor. Stunning large photos, well-worded titles, and great text elements intrigue readers, while helpful content keeps them reading. Intriguing angles add zing to what otherwise might be considered ordinary subjects. For the best travel magazine, the bronze goes to National Geographic Traveler, Keith Bellows, Editor-in-Chief. Silver is awarded to Afar, Greg Sullivan, Editorial Director. And taking gold in the category as best travel magazine is Author Farmer's Budget Travel, Nita Wildorf, Editor-in-Chief. Budget travel intrigues readers, making them realize that they could actually enjoy the exotic journeys the magazine proposes. With great photography and easy-to-follow maps and graphics, it's a winning formula, extremely appealing and easy to read. On now to the awards for best newspaper travel sections. First, for newspapers with circulation less than 350,000, the Bronze Award winner section is the Orange County Register, Santa Ana, California, Gary Warner, Travel Editor. The silver winning travel section is the Oregonian, Portland, Oregon, SATW member Alex Pulaski, Travel Editor. And gold for the second year in a row goes to the San Francisco Chronicle, SATW member Spud Hilton, Travel Editor. The Chronicle's writing is fast-paced and clever, and Spud's sections are always an adventure. An outstanding example is his breathtaking centerpiece on Gibraltar's The Rock. The piece reveals the quirky blend of Anglo tradition and small-town bonding that comes with living in a geopolitical sore spot on a geologic sore thumb. For newspapers with a circulation of 350,000 or more, the Bronze Award goes to The Washington Post, Joe Yonan, Travel Editor. The silver award-winning travel section is the Dallas Morning News, SATW member Mary Ellen Botter, Travel Editor. Winning gold in the category, the Los Angeles Times, Catherine Hamm, Travel Editor. Staff material may dominate the section, but Catherine doesn't think user-generated content is a dirty phrase. She gleefully takes advantage of her audience's knowledge for money-saving tips, family journals, and other features to broaden the section. The Times set the Gulf oil spill catastrophe in proper context, reporting on Alabama beaches that were untouched and reminding readers that New Orleans was fine, thank you. Not a whitewash, but an inspiring lesson in human endurance, tastefully done in the region's can-do spirit. Light, tight, and bright. Now, here are the 2011 winners, selected by the judges in the competition for the Grand Award, Travel Journalist of the Year. The Bronze Award winner is freelance writer Kate Cyber. There's a reason why Kate's writings are featured in so many prominent publications. She's a storyteller who knows how to put together a compelling lead and follow it up with a colorful piece you can't stop reading. The scenery she describes is always enticing, whether seen from a canoe on a lost river or from a helicopter on the way to a day of skiing on virgin snow-laden mountains. 
Winning Silver, actor, director, and freelance writer, Andrew McCarthy. Andrew's visual and descriptive writing won him gold in this category a year ago, and his work continues to impress. His range of topics is expansive, covering wonders from all over the world and finding serendipity in subjects that might be considered commonplace. Andrew can even make Midtown Manhattan sound appealing, but whether reporting from faraway islands, deserts, or cities, he makes every destination appear adventurous yet familiar. And the Gold Award winner, the Lowell Thomas Travel Journalist of the Year for 2011. Author, columnist, radio and TV reporter commentator, and SATW member, Rick Steves. With guidebooks, TV specials, radio broadcasts, website, blog, and newspaper columns, Rick makes effective use of today's multiple media opportunities. He has already taken a bronze and two gold awards in this competition. His work embraces diversity, a wide range of topics, and always rings with the honesty and straightforward approach found in his everyday candor. Everything anyone wants to know about Europe's top 20 destinations is included in the 104-page premiere edition of Smithsonian Presents Travels with Rick Steves, a must-read for trip planners and travelers alike. Rick conquers each location with advice and language to serve the most discerning traveler. For candor, excellence, and outstanding writing, Rick Steves earns gold as the SATW Foundation Travel Journalist of the Year for 2011. Congratulations to Rick Steves and all winners in the 2011 Lowell Thomas competition. This competition is underwritten by the Belgian Tourist Office for Flanders and Brussels and by Travel Guard Travel Insurance. The SATW Foundation appreciates their contributions and the donations made by so many SATW members in support of its goal to recognize and reward outstanding travel journalism. Special thanks also to all entrants in this year's competition. We invite you to enter and be part of this presentation next year at our 2012 convention in Indianapolis.